Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. I talk a lot about the failures of the higher education system, the toll that it takes on this generation, because they're all getting indoctrinated. They're taking all of our money. And now the federal government is bailing out these universities. And I'm saying that they are bailing out the universities because the universities are rich and they are the ones that are hiking tuition and exploiting students. So students are taking out loans, et cetera, et cetera. The whole system is a hot mess. But now I have another story story for you that involves a lot of university endowment and money and some progressive racism hoaxes. Before we get into it, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, ring that notification bell, and of course, you can go check out my merch collection at dailywire.com slash Brett. The story is about Oberlin College. Oberlin is in Ohio. It is like the art school of the Midwest. I have a couple of friends who went there to study musical theater. It's a well-respected school, but it is very progressive and very artsy. New York Post tweeted out this story. They said, Oberlin to pay bakery $36 million in defamation suit over racial profiling. And the first comment said, sounds like Oberlin tuition is going to go up. They will pass this on to its students. Oh my God. I am never going to financially recover from this. I've said it before, but these universities, they are just another arm of government corruption. They are exploiting students. They are hiking up their prices. Their endowments are ballooning because they have so much money. Meanwhile, their students are getting meaningless degrees and under crippling debt. So, I mean, my advice right now is to be very, very particular about, you know, where you go to college. If you are going to go to college, don't take out loans. And if you decide not to go to college, and you want to save your money. You need to make sure that that money is secure. And the best way to do that is through Bullion Max. Because the value of the dollar is decreasing every single day. So even if you think that you are saving your money by not going to college, you're still losing money, which is why you do not want all of your money tied to the U.S. government. My advice is to diversify at least some of your savings into precious metals, and Bullion Max can help you do that. Bullion Max is a direct-to-consumer precious metals retailer. You can get gold and silver. You never have to talk to any retail associate. You can buy all of it online, and then Bullion Max will ship your metals directly to your door, fully insured where you can store them and protect yourself against the government. And to help you get started, I have put together a special patriotic silver starter kit just for my listeners. So if you want to go get that, go to bullionmax.com slash Cooper. Again, this is just for you guys. It is a patriotic silver starter kit. You need this to hedge against inflation and against the corrupt government and corrupt universities because... This story is about to get wild. These are the details from the story because Oberlin is trying to twist all of the details. The mainstream media is trying to twist all of the details. So I just want to give you the facts first. This all started in November of 2016 when an African-American Oberlin college student went into the bakery. He's underage and he was trying to buy wine with a fake ID. They realized that it was a fake ID. They turned him down and the clerk noticed that the student was hiding a couple of other bottles of wine under his shirt. And the student turned around and tried to run out of the store stealing the alcohol the clerk ran out and tackled him and was trying to get the alcohol back uh, and then two of the shoplifters friends came on and started beating up the clerk from the bakery when police finally arrived they witnessed uh gibson who is the son of the owner of the bakery. So that's the one who was working the clerk. Uh, he was lying on the ground with the three students punching and kicking him. And the police report stated that Gibson sustained a swollen lip, several cuts and other minor injuries. The police arrested the students and charged all three with assault and the shoplifter with robbery as well. And in 2017, all three students pleaded guilty. This is very important. They all pleaded guilty. And they said that they believe Gibson's actions were justified and were not racially motivated. They were sorry for what happened. They messed up. That should have been the end of it. But no, because the day after the incident, Oberlin College got involved. Faculty and students, they gathered in a park across the street from the bakery. They had protests and they said that the shop clerk was racially profiling the young student and that he was not actually shoplifting, but he was just trying to tackle and attack the student because he was black. Ridiculous. The Oberlin Student Senate passed a resolution saying that the bakery has a history of racial profiling and discriminatory treatment of students and residents alike. A bakery! And they called for all students to immediately cease all support, financial and otherwise, of Gibsons and called upon the Oberlin College president to publicly condemn the bakery. This is literally like some twisted movie. I know that your college is in the middle of nowhere in Ohio and you probably don't have a lot going on other than your arts programs, but find something else to be concerned about. This is a classic example of them having such a good and privileged life. Everything is going well for them. They are these young students in a very well-to-do school, 
Like that Oberlin endowment is huge. So they are causing problems so that they have something to be angry about. But that wasn't all that the student Senate did. They then took the resolution where they said that Gibson's was, you know, racially profiling students. And they said that the school could no longer work with Gibson's Bakery because they used to provide the school with, you know, baked goods for lunch and bread and that sort of thing. But they took the resolution saying that they were racist and put it in a display case outside of the school where it remained for an entire year. So everybody who came to Oberlin saw that this bakery was apparently racist. But then they went so far as to say that the bakery themselves incited the protests and caused all of this. They said Gibson's Bakery's archaic chase and detain policy regarding suspected shoplifters with a catalyst for the protests. The guilt or innocence of the students is irrelevant to both the root cause of the protests and this litigation. So they are saying because a small business is chasing somebody that is stealing from their store. They are being inherently racist and they deserve to be shut down, to be sued, to have protests outside of their shop. I mean, I don't, I, I shouldn't even be surprised by this because literally last week we talked about how BLM said that the legal system was white supremacy. Apparently condemning somebody who was robbing a store, that's the root problem. It doesn't matter if they were actually doing it or not, but chasing somebody that is apparently stealing something, oh, that's racist. And then the final layer of this is that Oberlin came back to Gibson Bakery and said, well, what if you, you know, just moving forward, you gave every student like a pass? Like, oh, well, for, for a first time shoplifter offender, we won't chase you down. And, and then maybe then we'll let it go. No, I'm sorry. That's absolutely asinine. Then Gibson Bakery rightfully sued Oberlin for defamation. This has been going on since 2016 and just this month, a decision was made. That is why it is in the news. There is your backstory if you have not been following it. I know that was a lot of information. I'm very sorry. I had to set the tone because you have to see what people are saying about this online. Now that we didn't got that out the way. I didn't mention this as well. Somebody commented and said, it is a shame that the original owners died before they got this victory. Yes, in the six years that this has been going on, the two owners that started this bakery, it is a family run bakery, they died watching their bakery be slandered across the country in nationwide media coverage for racially profiling black students when all they did was try to protect their reputation and not selling alcohol to an underage person and then chasing down somebody who was stealing alcohol from their shop. That is all they did. And they watched their life's business be torn apart in front of them and they died in the process. The things that these people do are immoral and criminal. The demand for racism far outpaces supply. Yes, and that is gonna be a theme that we touch on a lot in this segment. And like I said, this story has gotten nationwide media coverage. It has been uh, in the New York Times on multiple occasions, and the most recent was just a couple of days ago when they were covering the resolution of this. They tried to spin it per usual, and they tweeted this. Oberlin College has agreed to pay the $36.59 million to a bakery that said it was falsely accused of racism after it caught a student shoplifting. Oberlin has agreed. Oh, that's so nice of them. After the bakery claimed that they were falsely accused. No, Oberlin is being forced to pay $36 million by a court because the court found that Oberlin falsely accused. This is not some, oh, they're so benevolent. They're sorry for, you know, what they did. No, they're not sorry. They would probably do it again. <laughs> that's my opinion. Thankfully though, the comments have been calling them on their bullshit. And it has been a delight to see, like across the board, anybody with a brain has been saying, like, why are you trying to defend these people? They're awful. Holy crap, New York Times. They didn't merely say it. They were falsely accused. The court found it so. Oberlin isn't paying because it wants to. It lost. It is paying because the bakery was falsely accused definitively legally. And this wasn't just like a one-off case. They are paying now because they were trying to go back to another court to get it overturned because they desperately don't want to look like they have failed but they have failed on all accounts. Somebody said, is there anyone left at the New York Times with any journalistic integrity? Mm, probably not. Good for Gibson's Bakery, but at least be honest, a university knowingly slandered a business, tried bribery and coercion, and still lost in court over and over again. Yes, and I'm very happy to see it. Another person said, it didn't say it was falsely accused. It was found by a court to have been falsely accused. Again, so many comments like this, and I love it. This guy said, they agreed to abide by a court order. That's very nice of them. Somebody else said, truly benevolent of them to help their local small businesses so generously. My God. The thing that makes me so angry is that the student senate who caused this six years ago they're out of school now. Those dipshits. I want to know if they have grown up at all in the last six years and have been able to look back and go, holy crap, we ruined people's lives because we wanted attention and we wanted to look politically correct. I would like to think that they feel awful, and that they have learned and that they can, you know, find some forgiveness and move on and do better in the world. But also in this age, 
knowing millennials, knowing my generation, it might be unlikely. That might be, you know, too hopeful of me. Somebody else said, been seeing a lot of stories similar to this. Uh, another one of a Duke athlete who lied about a racist incident. Hopefully there comes a happy medium where no one demisses allegations, but also people don't fall for those weaponizing identity. I, you know, I do agree with this comment because in the last six years, racism has become a political hammer. It is a gotcha. And it's awful because much like, you know, rape and sexual assault, which has also gotten incredibly politicized by the Me Too movement, people who actually experience racism, you don't hear about that. And they don't report it and we don't talk about it because all of these ridiculous cases are the ones that get media attention and that create a firestorm online when none of it is true. It helps nobody. It actually is more harmful than anything. And this person did point out an interesting story and I want to kind of close on this. They're talking about the, uh, the Duke story. Uh, it's very coincidental timing because the story about Duke also reached ahead this week. A brief backstory at a women's basketball game uh, between Duke and Brigham Young University BYU, a black Duke player claimed that she heard BYU students yelling the N-word behind her as she was playing. Students denied all the allegations. A lot of people like were saying, no, I didn't hear anything. Regardless, BYU removed a student from the game because there was a lot of commotion. And then they said they were going to launch an investigation. Uh, meanwhile, the black Duke student continued to grow the story with the help of her DLM activist lawyer godmother, who did an entire media circuit saying that her goddaughter was the victim of racism by all of these BYU Mormons. They're awful. They're backwards. They called her the N-word, whatever. Um, and this woman has a history of racist hoaxes. I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. This week, BYU concluded their investigation, which included um, talking to BYU students, Duke students, faculty, uh, Duke coaches, everybody that was in attendance. Um, they watched all of the game tapes and they found no instance of anybody yelling the N-word. They apologized to the student who they wrongfully removed, who happened to be special needs. Which is just, <laughs> it's like, oh my God. I don't even have anything to say about it because it's absolutely backwards and ridiculous. Here's a tweet about the whole story. Uh, Clay Travis said, after an exhaustive investigation, BYU announced that they have found zero evidence of any racial slur. They apologized to the fan who was kicked out, saying he did nothing wrong. This was Jesse Smollett on a volleyball court. It's not necessarily that you don't believe that this is the truth. You don't even want to see the truth. Duke should be ashamed. Yes, they should be ashamed. And a lot of people in the comments were saying, you know, I would like a non-biased external source to do an investigation because obviously BYU was doing it about their own student body and so people think that there's a conflict of interest there but I am choosing to believe that they are being honest and they are having integrity because they did talk to people from BYU from Duke coaches everybody I mean there were a ton of people that did have bias that were interviewed so I'm choosing to believe that they are being honest and sort of like the Oberlin story but on a much smaller scale this is having a huge ripple effect because other schools are now canceling games with BYU trying to condemn them saying we don't want to play against a racist team, which is then hurting the BYU students that again did nothing wrong. And this is not because they actually care about racism or they actually care about protecting their students. They want the brownie points. They want to be able to say, oh, we're taking a stand. We don't want to associate with you. Get over it. Like they just said that nothing happened and you are continuing this hoax. You are causing the division. And this is such a common thread in our world right now. We are better off than we ever have been. Like, yes, there are problems in this country. There are problems abroad. That will always be the case, but we are so advanced in our society. We have never been more unified. It is spurred by the people who pretend like they are fighting against racism and are fighting for unity and tolerance. These people needed to be angry about something. Things were so good that they decided to cause all of this division. And the fact that people still don't see that and buy into it is astounding to me. But thankfully, stories like these are coming through. People are seeing through the bullshit, basically, seeing through the gaslighting. And so I do believe there is hope. You know, on a small scale, people are waking up, individuals are making changes, and they are straying from the mainstream narrative. And that is all that we can ask for. Do you want to be the only person not caught up on the Internet's latest news? I didn't think so. So make sure you're subscribed and ring that bell so you never miss an episode.